Hello, this is Tim Diakono from Love in Malta. Welcome to the second part of our interview with former Prime Minister Joseph Muscat. If you would like to watch the first part, go to loveinmalta.com and check it out over there. Many Labour supporters say that Kitsch can be stabbed you in the back, that he caught you in a net, that he betrayed your trust, and that it's thanks to him that you're no longer Prime Minister. Is this what happened? <laughs> That's a version. Do you subscribe to that version? Well, I have. I said what I had to say. I, and I, as I told you before, um, I am not in the habit of throwing people to the dogs or to the sharks. Did he stab you in the back? Did he catch you in a net? I think Keith Cambry is going, still going through a very delicate phase of his life with health problems. And I will not um, use this time to say certain things. How often do you speak to him? once every two weeks or so. And you mentioned his health problems. Do you know how he's doing? Well, I think it's no secret that he's still undergoing treatment. And this theory itself, the fact that, I mean, it's, uh, it was a big issue, it was a reason that, you, that, um, that, that prompted your resignation. Um, Let's, is, I, I'll say this only is, this. It's obvious that there were people who betrayed my trust. Can you say who these people were? Oh, I think at various levels. People in the plural, not one person. Yes, at, at various levels. Does any of these people work in your office? No, look, I think that um, you would want me to mention names. And maybe they, there will be names that will be mentioned because they are the usual suspects. I think that there are people whose names are never mentioned who too betrayed my trust. And where do they work? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the jobs plus agency. Uh, no, but, but be a bit. Be a, please be a bit specific. I, I, you don't no, no. I, you know, uh, Tim. You, you I have. I have the luxury of today being a private individual, and I can reply in this way too. <laughs> Were any of them in your cabinet? I. I have replied. No, you didn't reply. No, I, I have replied. You did not like the reply, but I have replied. Because it was a. It was a. <laughs> it, was a it was a cryptic answer. Well, it, 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 it was an answer. So you're not going to confirm or deny whether any of these people who betrayed your trust were in your cabinet and whether they are still currently in Robert Abella's cabinet right I now? I replied. Did the Prime Minister betray your trust? No. When he became Prime Minister, what kind of deal did you make with him? No deals. There's, no, there's a lot of talk about the deal with the devil. Um, deal the, with the devil. The Patim Shaitan. No, I don't know. He wasn't referring to that. It's pretty clear. What was he referring to? Oh, come on. You, you, you know quite clearly what he was referring to. No, uh, the implication is that there was some backroom deal going on um, and that... With you, me? And that you were somehow involved in it. No, no, no. The, 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 it was pretty clear that it was because there was the possibility of a third contender coming into um, the, the race for the Labour Party leadership and the deal between two contenders and not the third one. It was pretty clear. Nothing to do with me. So there was no private backroom deal that you made with, no, 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 no. with, with Robert Abela? Was yeah, that? You, you know, when, when, you, when you go into politics and there is a race, a contender's race, and I kept out of that race, the people who went think they won it because it was them, their, you know, their thing to win. Those who lose think that uh, it's, there's someone else to blame. That's always the case. How often do you speak to Conrad Mitzi? I speak to him, you know, every week or so. Every week or so? Yes. So he's recently been um, at the, the PAC? Yes for hours or at, at a stretch. Yes, uh, sometimes I told him that I disagree with him that he doesn't answer the questions because I think that the answers he can give are, are very good answers from the technical point of view of, of the NAO report. Okay, and how did he respond? Well, that he has legal advice on that. And I'm, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not his legal advisor, but I told him quite clearly that I think, I think he should answer because he asked answers to those questions and he should not fall for the provocation of uh, 
uh, going the sort of I won't, I will not answer your question or whatever. He seemed quite nervous and quite scared, and this is why people don't answer questions. Are you concerned that he m might get arrested and expose details on corruption? He can expose whatever he wants. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I don't know whether he will get arrested. I definitely I'm not nervous myself. And there's a chance that he will then? I don't know. I, I read what people, according to some people, everyone will get ar arrested. How can I tell you who will get arrested or not? I don't so, know. If you're so confident that everything was fine, no, there, should no, there should be no I'm not, possibility. I am confident that when it comes to me, I have nothing to hide. Conrad Mitzi might. No, I'm not saying that. I, I'm saying simply that uh, the situation is such. You asked me about myself. I told you I'm very confident about myself. And I, I told Conor Mitzi that he should reply because I think he has very good answers to give. And I think whatever one thinks about him, um, you know, one of the things that hasn't been said so far um, is, for example, the, the fact that Everyone had criticized the hedging agreement, the agreement we had on gas prices we had with Azerbaijan, and no one dares open, uh, open their mouth to say that over the past six months or so, that agreement was a crucial part of the fact that Malta was left almost immune from um, energy price hikes across the it is going to expire, thank you. But if it wasn't there, everyone was mentioning this agreement when the, when the prices were um, slightly higher than the market prices. Now that the market prices have shot way above the agreed prices, I would say that if we had lost some money over two, three years, we recouped them in just six months. No one is mentioning that. He should mention that. You've strongly hinted at a potential return to, to politics. How do you I do this? I haven't strongly hinted this. Yes. I have simply answered an answer, a, a question by Herman Gregg, who told me, would you ever consider going back to politics? And I said, I might. And that's it. That's, is that strongly hinting? I, don't I know. might if, if they keep bothering me. Yes. Who was they? They were the, the people who keep on uh, you know, they're fixated with, with, with me, Joseph Muscat, Joseph Muscat all the time, you know. It, 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 it was... Are they these same people? It was almost a, you know, a, a retort rather than anything else. If you do return to politics, will it be in, with the Labour Party? Of course. No, I know, not, I know a plan to set up a third party. Oh, third party, third party. <laughs> Not even Don Mintov managed to do that, let, let alone Joseph Muscat. And my, my, as if I can destroy something I, I helped build and wi to which I gave, um, you know, half of my life. Do you intend to content, contest the election? This election? This election? No. no. The one after? Mm, then we'll see. There's a chance. <laughs> then we'll see. It's, uh, you, you, we don't even know when this election is taking place, let alone when the next one is taking place. So, but you're leaving. But you're leaving. It's, the by, it's very far away. But you're leaving the door open for potential potential return. It's very far away. What do you do in your office in Amazon? I work on politics, on meeting people, on yes. con on these consultancies. I, I most of the time I meet people. For, and it's for not work? my office. It's an office uh, uh, in the name of the office of the Prime Minister. I'm simply tolerated there. The day the Prime Minister or the OPM decides not to give me access to it, I'm not there. So what's, what exactly? Can you publish the terms of the contract actually? Uh, there's no contract. There's nothing. The, so what it's, is it? It's, it's, simply, it's simply a part of a package where I am allowed to use the premises and that's it. It's not my premises, it's a government premises. There's no, there's no deadline like after, after four or five year lease? It's not a lease. If, I ha if there you, was you a pay for it. If, if there was a lease, I would have a title. I have absolutely no title. I'm tolerated there. The moment any prime minister wants to kick me out, they kick me out. Did you give yourself the key then? So when no, you left, I didn't. Robert Abella gave you the key? No, I didn't. It was a cabinet decision. So the cabinet decided to 
give you the key? This is after you had stepped down as prime minister. No, before I stepped down as prime minister, I think the, the final cabinet meeting um, um, where I, I wasn't present. And they decided we're going to, did you choose the office? Did you ask for it? No, I was given a number of choices. Uh, it's, it was part of the and you chose And you chose that one. And there's no lease. So if you, if you want to stay there for the next 10 years, if, if, you, if the prime minister keeps tolerating you for the next 10 years. It's the prime minister's decision. And, and just to clarify, not paying a cent for this office, it's just literally a government building that you can go in whenever you want. It's a couple of rooms which I can use. And uh, when... Uh, any government decides to not to allow me, to, and I'm not the first prime minister who was given this. The first was given an office like this. No. Absolutely. Who was given before? Oh, make your research. You, you seem to think some of you guys that that history started in in in, in 2000 or uh, do your research. Do you work there on Saturdays and Sundays? <laughs> I usually don't work there on Saturday and Sundays, and I usually work a lot from home too. Okay. A day before the... Why is this? The Saturday and so I do not understand this. Because the Prime Minister recently um, said that he, um, he justified this, this huge contract he was given by the Planning Authority by saying sometimes I worked on Saturdays but and the, Sundays. But, you know, but this is a huge deal of hypocrisy, I must say, for the simple reason. My answer to that would, would be, look, this contract was given to, not to a person, but to an office, as far as I know, the, 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 the office of, of, of Dr. Abela, by the nationalist government. So to me, it, it stinks of hip hypocrisy that the nationalist party, who gave out this contract to, to, to the office of Dr. Abela, is now criticizing this this, this, uh, but this the terms of the contract changed. Oh, come on. The terms did not change. Of course they did. It they went from 7,000 to 17,000. It, it was the amounts that changed commensurate to the work that was done. But, you know... What, what work? You, you, you were in you, charge of the, of the planning you are, authority. You are, you are, you, one is criticizing most, uh, mostly the, the principle. And to me, you know, it was Lawrence Gonzi that gave out this contract. And now the Nationalist Party is criticizing this contract. It's hypocrisy. It's, it's just because uh, Robert Abela happens to have become prime minister. No, if, it's if not. He, if he wasn't prime minister, he wouldn't have been criticized because of that. That's that's not exactly true because you're missing out the part that this the the amount of money given to him increased dramatically from it seven thousand. Increased as far as I know because the work increased what, what dramatically. Work? What work? I I believe that he explained it quite well that the, the planning applications. Of course. So they increased and under I, his I, tenure. And I believe also the, the processes and, and so on, they increased. And as far as I know, you're comparing the first, um, the first amount to the final amount. I think that also during the term of the national administration, the amounts had increased. Did you approve the, the contract when you were prime minister? Approved as in, I don't think it was up to me to approve or to any minister. It was a running contract. But you were in, but, charge, but yes, but you were I, in I, charge of the planning I, authority. I did right? not have any problem. And if you want to say I approved, I approved. But I, I, uh, you know, I did not have any problem with that contract being given, for the simple reason. Once again, it's, it's uh, this is all hypocrisy. Um, that is work that had to be done. The previous government had decided that instead of having uh, an in-house lawyer, uh, um, one should contract it out. I think that. The, the Abela office had garnered a lot of experience when it comes to, um, to dealing with the planning authority. So yes, I, I was in favor of that. So you could just go up to 50,000 and that's fine because it's the same job. I don't judge people by the, the amounts they're paid, but they're by the value and the work they're put in. Okay? I can tell you of many contracts that are worth much more that are value for money and many contracts that are, are worth much less that are not value for money. A day before the search, Roberta Metzola, a person you regularly criticised as Prime Minister, was elected President of the European Parliament. We saw Robert Abela go up to Strasbourg, um, embrace it, they actually hugged, they celebrated it. Did you celebrate it as well? I'm glad for Malta that, there, that a Maltese person uh, has reached um, such an important post. 
So you you were said you did celebrate it. You were glad that. No, I'm I'm I did not celebrate it. I am glad that a Maltese person, even if it's one of my harsh critics, reached such an important post. And now the moment she famously refused to shake your hand at Castile yes, has so taken on a life of its own, yes, yes. both as a as a meme but also as a significant political moment. What happened exactly? Well, I I think I do as I do with everyone, even my fiercest rivals. I give out my hand uh, to, sh to, you know, as a sign of goodwill. She decided not to. I will not delve on that. It was her decision. I, if we meet again, I will still um, give my hand. It's up to her then to decide whether to shake my hand. So, cannabis has been legalized. First of all, what do you, do you agree with the, with the bill? Totally. Could it be improved? No, I think it was much even, it's even better than than what I had envisaged. I think, I think a fantastic job was done by, by Julia Farrugia, then by Rosian Kotayer, then by Owen Bonnici. They did a fantastic job. The Prime Minister put, it's, it's obvious that he put um, his, uh, uh, the impetus for, for it to be done. I, I think th the only real sore point in all this is the fact that banks will still not bank anyone who will touch the, the industry. So um, it will still continue to be mostly a cash-based uh, industry and that will, Im will impinge on its legitimacy. Do you, there's some global debate starting on whether psychedelic substances should be next to be legalized. Do you think we should Legalized yes, substances, I, I've, 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 like I've, magic mushrooms. I've read quite a lot about that. I think there is a, a very considerable industry. Um, I do know for a fact that there are at least two very reputable investors um, who are willing to invest in Malta. In, in, in the psychedelic sphere? Yes, yes, if we decide to... to, to, um, to um, to regulate that that industry, so yes, I, th I think it's the way to go. The w w in on in regulated, um, um, so it's basically so substances clinic, clinic like like LSD, magic mushrooms. I wouldn't mention LSD because I haven't read about LSD, but about the magic mushrooms and so on. Uh, what I know is that there are proposals internationally for clinics to use those. Um, uh, those substances for very particular cases and I know for a fact that there are at least two investors that are willing to make that investment in Malta if Malta decides to regulate not in the same manner as, uh, as cannabis where you can cultivate at home so it's not a that sort of thing but it's more from uh, a medical perspective and using those substances in controlled environments within uh, controlled clinics. So yes, I, th I think it should be examined. You never really spoke about the scandal that erupted shortly after resignation, the, the Montenegro wind farm scandal in, in Mazura. Jorgen Fenech's hand was in there as well. He seemed to have profited off it again. Off I a was deal. totally unaware of that. Totally. So, so this happened, what, like under, under your eyes? Like that, that well, I know for a fact that there was... You speak to Conrad Mitzi about it. In, in the, the meetings yes. you have with him every week? Or? I ha don't have a meeting. You I speak to him every week? Uh, okay. Most of the time, you know, uh, on, on the phone. Um, I, yes, I spoke to him about this. And he told me he was unaware about this. He told me that there was a due diligence process that did not um, uh, earmark uh, this point. I definitely wasn't, wasn't aware of it. And you believe, and you believe, Conrad. No, Mitzi I believe myself, and I believe myself that I, I will. Do you believe I Conrad Mitzi? Well, I, I don't think he would lie to me in that way. So why, why would the Labour Party expel him? Well, I wasn't part of of that decision. If you had, process. if you were in the room, would you have voted to kick him out? I wasn't part of that process. But if you were, would you have voted to kick him out? I wasn't part of that process, and I, I wasn't in the room to see how the... the, the it's almost unanimous. 
I, I don't know whether it was almost unanimous. I don't know whether it was unanimous. I don't know. And I don't know. Um, there must have know, been a reason. I, there must have been I a don't reason. know the discussion and I don't know why this took place in the sense the, the, the dynamics internally. So I don't know how I would have reacted in the room. Was the mistake? Look, it was a decision. I took decisions in, in, during my spell in politics, which I came to regret. There were other things I did not decide upon, which I came to regret too. Then there are decisions I'm very happy about. But you never, one of, you never took a decision to expel an MP from your parliamentary I, group? I, 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 I took decisions on, uh, on uh, kicking ministers out, some were justified, other... Not from the party. I, I don't Not from the party. The no, kicking no, someone I, out of a party I, I is think, a sign that something is very, very badly wrong. I think that's very extreme. Um, what is extreme? Kicking someone kicking out? Kicking someone out of the party, that's very extreme. But, you know, it's a decision that has been taken. If it has been taken unanimously, I think that um, a reason was given. I'm, and I wasn't in the room to... to Did you speak to, to Conrad Mitzi about it? Like, you spoke about... It's about this happened no, right I, after I, I Montenegro scandal. I haven't spoken to him about this particular instance, no. Do you think that he should contest the election? I don't think he should in any way hinder the Labour Party. Okay, just back a bit on to Stewart and Nadine Delicata's yes. statement yes, um, earlier this week. She was, um, was extremely critical. I want to delve into this a little bit. She said that uh, the, they found nothing. They couldn't even pay their salaries. Uh, there was uh, no, no auditing process on, on, on Vital's global health care. They didn't pay their taxes. I, th I, th I think when someone, when someone buys a company, they do due diligence on that company. Okay? And it is a a private um, interaction between two companies. Now there is obviously the possibility of litigation between uh, government and, uh, and, and steward, and whatever I say will be used by either one part or the other. I don't they want said, to get She said that the government approached steward to take the concession. Is this I, true? I won't get involved in the, into that. I will Whether the government approach him, I please will, take this concession on. I will, I will say things when I need to say things. But I, I think that Stuart um, brought about great value at it in, in, in the process. Are you still in touch with Ram Tumaluri and the people who I were behind fighters? I think I met him maybe once in my life once in your life yes. and you gave him this massive contract? I didn't give him anything. It was a process. I, 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 I barely know most of the people the, that, that run, run um, processes myself. So. And the request for proposals was actually issued after the Memorandum of Understanding was signed? Yes, but it was scuttled. You know, uh, the MOU was seen as something that wasn't satisfactory. So um, a request for proposals was issued instead. That's but the, but, but, it that, was that's the, but the MOU was with the same investors. Yes, yes, and and when it it was brought uh, to the attention, it was uh, it was seen as unsatisfactory. General election is coming up. Um, first of all, if you were the prime minister, would you announce it now? Or would you keep playing this game of, of, of chicken? It's of up to the Prime Minister. I, uh, it's his, I was Prime Minister. I made the decisions uh, in my own way. Robert Abel as the Prime Minister, he makes his de decisions in his own way. Do any candidates stand out to you? Stand out in what sense? Impressing, are any candidates impressing you? Yes, I keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> from which, from obviously from the Labour Party? No, no, not necessarily from the Labour Party. I think there are good, decent people from, from all parties. And I'm not saying this because I'm out of politics today. I used to say this even when I was into, in, in politics myself. I, I used to say, you know, there are good, decent people in the Nationalist Party, good, decent people in the Labour Party. Do you think the gap will be larger than it was in 2017? 
I think it will be more or less the same thing. Finally, what? But it's what? up to the people. It's it's uh, definitely the Labour Party cannot 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 just take it for granted that. What what, what 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 do you think can happen for the gap to 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 shrink? No, everything can happen during an election campaign. The the gap can shrink. The gap can widen. Um, you know, new people can can surface. Um, no, a campaign is a campaign, so you need to be focused. You mentioned the the possibility um, when you your last speech as prime minister. You said you're going to campaign for a huge civil liberties uh, push. What are you talking about abortion? Yes. Are you campaigning for it? It's not the time yet, but it's obvious that that this is this is the next um, big debate that even political parties need need to face themselves because they will risk once again being outrun by uh, civil society. I think the debate has started. I think that it's not an easy debate. I think it's it's very personal. Um, just to avoid it is, is, is not on. Dr. Muscat, thank you very much thank for you. being with me here today. Thank you.